Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I'm excited because today we're going to be covering the Evolution Collection event, Patch Notes. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a discussion about Revenant and Octane being nerfed. There is the discussion about Rampart getting her heirloom, as well as a twist on the arenas, as well as a Rampart major, major buff that we have to cover, and as well as some other adjustments that are being made to the game, as well as discussing tap strafing and the adjustments from the developer team. So this is really exciting. Let's just jump into it. So first off, there's going to be limited time cosmetics for Wraith, Octane, Pathfinder, Fuse, Bangalore, Rampart, and Lifeline with a new whole POI takeover. This is Rampart's arena extravaganza, but this is all about Rampart, a really, really big thing for her. I'm excited. So the Rampart Town Takeover big mod. So we have the screenshot here. Again, I'll have everything in the description down below, but really to highlight, this can house multiple teams on this POI. She's bringing up the big guns. This is North of Lava City and World's Edge. They still have the balloon here, so you're going to be able to get out because this is a POI that exists towards the edge of the map. But rest assured, you can get right to Lava Siphon using this jump pad, or excuse me, jump pad balloon to get around the whole map. This is still south of Geyser, just if you're curious and still don't really know where it's at. But this is, I hope they have a lot of loot here. It's mentioned that it can house multiple teams here in the notes. But I really hope that this really brings a punch still without having loot too spread out. And I wonder how much loot is going to be here. This is Rampart's takeover. I assume she's got guns loaded everywhere. So that's really exciting. Be sure to check out the POI once it launches. Now the next thing is a Rampart replaced Ash here on the right. So Ash used to be the one talking. So I wonder how much Rampart's going to talk during the arenas. That's going to be definitely a change, but big change that Rampart slipped into arenas and offered what met it weapon modding, essentially, at a discount price. These marked out weapons, you can't go back to the base version. You can only go back to the special version, kind of adding a twist to arena, and I wonder how frequently. Her special deals update frequently, so be sure to check out what's available in your match and plan accordingly. I think it's a nice change. I wonder if this is going to be implemented to ranked where you know it's all about more consistency but i guess it kind of adds a little bit of a flow to things especially if it's your weapon of choice so we'll kind of see what that does for it so this could be a positive and it could be a negative depending on balancing especially if it's a gun like let's say the l star that you get fully upgraded and that's going to be a little bit of a concern not even a little bit that's going to be a concern now look at this we got ramparts heirloom problem solver so i'll do the animations day one and we'll break all this down because I'm definitely going to be getting this collection event. She's got like a thing that looks like a Pez dispenser, which is really, really cool. She's got her little gun drop there. Gum drop, excuse me. Gun, gum, both kind of I guess similar for Rampart, essentially. But that looks really sharp and really nice. I'm excited to really see how this gets broken down further. And I'll be sure to share it day one. Now there is a collection event with the additional skins, a lot of gum charms, as well as... A lifeline skin, triple tick skin that looks really nice, as well as a wingman skin. Now this is going to be constantly ongoing to be able to grab. Looks like we have a nice Rampart skin with her having light blue hair, as well as a fused one that we're going to see in just a moment. Now they're bringing back several skins like the, the Outlands Explorer bundle. They're bringing back a caustic skin. We've got one for Revenant here and looks like for Bloodhound as well. So a lot of skins, so the ones that are really the highlight, and there's a lot of them, the only ones are showcasing here, you see Fuse, which is not my favorite one. Wraith looks really, really clean, and Pathfinder looks amazing as well. I really am a big fan of the Pathfinder one. It looks really, really clean. Now, now the major buff coming to Rampart. This is definitely the biggest adjustment coming because Sheila is now mobile. You can now run around with Sheila. Now it says, run and shoot while walking so i can assume that's going to bring a lot of mobility to her i mean no joke she just literally has the weapon out but i'm curious when they say run how fast she's able to move the spin up is longer and she only gets one magazine in this mode but once she lets out you can put her away or until you run out of ammo but at any point point in time you can put Sheila down for your teammates to use and it literally acts the way it does before which is great this gives her a lot of pushing power and there's a note here talking about Rampart and her ultimate being like you know you you have all the defensive legends and Apex Legends is solely a defensive position kind of game but the thing is that they wanted to give more to Rampart to have her be more reactive to push with the team 
but they're going to monitor how this is going to play out. I have a lot of questions. When they say run, how fast is she going to be able to run? Can she slide with this? Like slide down a hill? Imagine her pushing with Sheila and sliding down a hill. That would be insane. So I'm curious the level of de detail they're going to have with that. And if she can do that, can she wall bounce? That would be pretty pretty nutty to see as well. There's a lot of question. And when she, when she slides, can she jump afterwards? And how much can she jump? So there's a lot of questions here on day one. I'm going to cover all the changes because we don't really know what how much. I'm only highlighting the keyword run. Now, Revenant and Octane got a nerf. So they're pairing together essentially in their effectiveness. But they've also got nerfed individually. Revenant has a visual VFX that's very similar to Loba's ultimate. Adding visibility when a totem is placed so you know that there's going to be a Revenant push. Octane jump pad horizontal distance by 10 to 15 percent has been reduced meaning I think that they have that range because when you slide you can get a little bit further distance whether you're just kind of walking into the pad. So this is definitely a nerf and he's also been nerfed by his stim regen. It goes from 1.5 to 1 HP per second. Now Bloodhound I think this is this is a buff. Now the thing is you had to rely on your teammate to really call this whenever there was clues if a team was nearby but now it's going to show in chat how long ago the event took place because there can be a lot going on and then having that in chat as a nice little little reminder is going to be helpful and it's definitely a buff to bloodhound so i really like this change the bochank definitely lost its potency but it looks like they're going to be bringing back the amount of arrows that you can hold you can the, per brick you have 16 instead of 14 and the stack increase overall from 32 instead of 28 so this is this is a good change and the draw speed reduced from 0.56 to 0.54 again the bow check bow has not been utilized as much and hopefully maybe this will bring people back to it just a little bit the hemlock reduced hip fire spread and the hip fire reset slightly faster so this brings it more in line to compete against the prowler the prowler hip fire is astronomically strong so this brings a little bit of strength back to the hemlock but not everything so I'm curious when they say reduced how much that means so we'll do a before and after and check that out as well looks like they buffed the shatter caps on the bow check bow damage per pellet increased so the draw range four to six damage medium seven to nine and full draw eleven to twelve I'm gonna be honest I don't think this is gonna make a massive change to it but I could be wrong it just seems like a really strong peacekeeper. I don't the, the shatter caps in general haven't been very again it, they seem to try to the, the goal is to bring the shatter caps into more of a meta. Now the shatter caps as well, the ADS strafe speed increased to shotgun strafe speed while shatter caps are enabled for the 3030 and the charge pellet damage increased from 35% to 50%. So it's going to be interesting to see if this really has people use the shatter caps cuz currently I don't feel like anybody uses them leave a comment if you use them i'm not really sure who does now it looks like the l star is getting a nerf the cooldown time off slightly increase the overheat lens replacement time slightly increased as well the rounds before they overheat at base was 22 is now 20 the white mag for 24 to 22 blue mag 26 to 24 and purple 28 to 26 and also it's more expensive in arena so we'll see how effective that is it's only more expensive on the base but the blue and purple it looks it's like a buff and a nerf the entry cost is more expensive but as you keep upgrading it it's been reduced slightly so it looks like they're nudging down the core stats to smooth that progression and they're going to keep an eye on it. The recoil, the, barely any recoil on the on the L-Star, in my opinion, is pretty easy to use and very, very powerful. I think it's just because the visual effects that it holds, especially when you're shooting somebody, can make it very difficult to shoot back. And that's really hard to balance, in my opinion. So shotguns for the EV-8 in Mozambique have been reduced for their headshot multiplier from 1.5 to 1.25, moving in line with the Peacekeeper and Mastiff. I definitely agree with this change for the EV-8 specifically because it kind of lowers that spike damage but i'm not sure if it's going to be enough to really knock down the eva 8 it's still pretty powerful the triple take ads chart time decreased from 1 to 0.8 it's a care package weapon so i'm kind of not really shocked but it's interesting to see that change they shortened the out of bounds timer from 30 seconds to 15 your timer should reset after being respawned swapping from these are quality of life changes sorry just want to make sure I iterate that swapping from red to gold nice with more health no longer requires a long press that's a really nice change there 
I can't tell you how many times that I have been eliminated because I was unable to do an effective swap on a gold armor. Evo shields and death boxes now show their health. That's also a positive change. I can't tell you how many times I have grabbed an armor that was really low and then went to a fight. And yeah, that's that's a good change. You know, you'd see it whenever it's got no armor or left and you don't swap to it. But this is this is a nice change. Also, this is quality of life. The lever warning has been improved as well, just to hold confirmation to make sure people really want to leave. And then also a delay going into the next match. Additional delay. Hmm. Let me read that again. Showing your leaving penalty. Is this for across the board? Interesting. Hmm. I, I mean, that's. we'll see how that plays out. I wonder, like, if you're going to see this last for hours, that'd be kind of crazy but nonetheless interesting and now they added the character portraits to detect widget for the recon characters so you can see if you get scanned by seer bloodhound crypto i think some of those are a little bit more straightforward when you see the drone nearby but i think it's helpful to know just who you got scanned by i guess for the memes if we we're kind of joking around what if you got scanned by three different people at once do you get three different indicators i don't know just kind of joking around there anyways they fixed the bug with streamer mode would it Anomalies and names on the scoreboard and arenas. That's a nice change because then you can still see he was in the arena. Fix an issue where players got randomly unreadied. Thank gosh. That's... Phew, I love that. That's a nice change. The Mother Lord Ultimate will no longer highlight enemies far below the ring. I'm curious of how far that range is. Increase the hitbox for the Exhibit Ultimate to better match the model. That's helpful. Let's see. Any major changes that I can be aware of? This The Fix the 30 Fences... I didn't, I didn't think that was still a thing. I thought they already fixed that. The wingman reactive skins appeared stuck in place when shooting. I've seen that one before, so that's a good change. Fix the mysterious fire show that would appear in firing range and cause a crash. I haven't experienced that, but, you know, less crashes is a good thing. And then some miscellaneous ones where players were able to reach farther than intended when punching an enemy player. That's an exciting adjustment. And then, of course, we're going to discuss the tap strafing here because we're not done yet pc only you'll no longer be able to mind forward movement to the mouse wheel on pc this previously enabled ex exaggerated movement tech known as tap strafing so my question if i spam w on the keyboard or with additional button will i still be able to tap strafe let's find out okay this is this is this is the kicker i'm gonna time i'm gonna timestamp everything it's a reminder earlier this week we announced our intention to remove tap strafing a decision that was met with surprise by many movement enthusiasts so in case you're not aware tap strafing is a sharp angular movement that you get and this is doable on controller i thought it was not doable controller but i was proven wrong many times before and had sore low-key ross hop in and show me that he was able to replicate this as well now this is, people kind of call it scroll wheel tap strafing because, well, it was much easier to do with a scroll wheel. So this change targets multiple rap, rapid directional input commands. So the biggest thing is that this changes multiple rapid directional commands after jumping. Movement should be feel unchanged for controllers and MK players who hadn't heard of the term tap strafing until this week. Kind of, I wonder how many people, leave a comment down below if this is the first time you've heard of tap strafing. I understand that a lot of people haven't, but it's interesting. This is now easily tunable on the fly, so if I guess if it doesn't work, then they can revert it. That's a positive note to have here. Our goal is to remove some of the sharpness movement on 90 degrees. So the question I have, I wonder if you can still spam the input on like a W key or just literally spam a button that's accessible nearby for you to replicate if you have like a trigger finger example for tap strafing. Things like wall bounding redirects remain the same, but movement afforded by squirrel wheel strafing should be removed. Okay, they just nerfed the score wheel, essentially what I'm reading. Tap strafing is a unique mechanic. Many this this will make it more difficult to tap strafe into a like jump pad, for example, because the input was very specific. Sometimes with a scroll wheel, so I wonder if again trigger finger, if you're able to do it, what that means. So of course they have a note here. Uh, darn it, the response balance decision cater to controller players. The best answer they have is when it comes to accessibility. We often must consider controller players given the constraints compared to M and K. But accessibility isn't the same as balance design. It's a strawman argument to treat it as such. All right, that's fair. This is why we believe. My question is, I wonder if there's ability to give controllers the ability to to do it. But at this point, it's kind of a a moot discussion because it's already being 
removed from like the scroll wheel. The first issue is highly inaccessible. We mean the opaque technique that's practically impossible to learn organically. The most egregious example require a strange keybind. Again, my question is, because I'm going to be hopping in day one, if I spam an input on something else, can I still do it? And what about the players who, my concern, what if they use macros to spam like an input? If I press seven, that means I move super, super, or spams the input to press forward. That's going to be interesting. I don't, I, I don't, I wonder if they thought about that or what that's going to mean. Secondly, tap straights have straight terrible readability and limited counterplay. I bet you they're going to answer it here in just a moment, but I'm kind of answering asking questions before and i apologize for that pathfinder grapples octane pads aside i've seen close to players breaking ankles with victims including high skill players who are lost for what to do while it's not terribly prevalent i'm concerned about how this would continue to evolve as more players adapt to further develop their tap strafing mechanics the third point and most problematic is how tap strafing is exacerbated by movement abilities i guess that would be like octane stem for cranking 90s while moving at ridiculous speeds it's understandable. Mobility creep is something to be very very mindful of in the game. While many love the freedom of Apex Legends movement, which I know we all love, it's not surprising that mobility legends are highly popular. Mm, so the, I guess the question they have is how can you open the mobility creep of opening Pandora's box and new problems to solve? How is third parting affected by mobility within a fight? How are front lines defined? How quickly can they close the gap on an enemy? It's important to note that limitations don't all equate to lower skill gaps. There are skill gaps within working within constraints. One would argue that bunny hop healing lower the skill ceiling. Players could make up the misplays with less constraints on their abilities to safely heal. Definitely types of skill expression are changed. Okay, so to sum this up, we're just going to have to test it. This is a well-worded, by the way. He also tweeted um, John Larson. He tweeted out a really, really great twit longer than i resonated with and it's nice to hear their their side of things and their thoughts i think it's important you guys leave a comment down below what your thoughts are and also whenever i showcase this in a video that you leave your comments i don't know if the developers watch my videos but if there's a positive healthy discussion i think we should all encourage it and really highlight what should be changed and how we can find a middle ground because i think no matter what in any sort of discussion there's a middle ground to be had especially with a movement text such as a tap strafe i actually don't just disagree with the removal of the scroll wheel the question is is when if you can still do it by tapping a specific button or is if that angular change is going to be removed altogether it's going to be very interesting to see but nonetheless this, these are all the patch notes that we have this is quite a bit to unpack and uncover i will upload this here in actually just a moment um, as you can tell i've just kind of as soon as i got the patch notes i was recording this thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys all in the next video